Okay, we're going to work through an example of finding the global extrema of a function uh, on a closed and bounded region, um, but I want to talk about the procedure a little bit because it really mirrors what we actually do um, when we do Calc 1. So you can see the very first thing we're going to do here, it just says find all the critical points. Well, it's exactly what we do in Calc 1, it's not a big deal. Um, we now have to deal with the boundary points. Um, in Calc 1, that just meant find the endpoints. <laughs> um, in Calc 3, what this is going to boil down to is that we're going to have to find an equation plus an equality for each piece of the boundary, turn that into a Calc 1 problem, and then find the Calc 1 points that go along with it. Finally, um, in, when finding global extrema in Calc 3, we are going to have to make it usually a giant table and hope everything works out the way we want it to. And from our table, um, we're going to try to read off the global maximums and minimums. So here's the problem I want to look at. Find the global extrema of the function uh, f of xy equals y squared minus 4xy um, on r, this is r for region, which is bounded by the parabola y equals x squared on one side and y equals x plus 12 on the other. Now, first off, you can see that I have to have that region because if I look at my function, it has no global maximums. So for example, if I plug in x equals zero, I can see that section looks like y squared, which goes up forever. Um, if I plug in something like y equals one, I'm gonna see one minus four x, which is a line that goes down forever. So this has no global maximums and global minimums unless I restrict what I'm looking at. And this part right here says, um, restrict what you're looking at. Now the first part of the procedure, I don't know if you remember this or not, was just find the critical points. We find critical points the same way we've been doing. We just take the partial with respect to x. And what do I get here? I just get minus four y. I take the partial with respect to y. And I'm going to get two y minus four x. Those are both always defined. So I'm gonna put a little always defined here with a smiley face, because that means there's less work for us to do. And now I find the critical points just by setting equal to zero. Uh, the first equation tells us that y equals zero, and the second equation tells us when y equals zero that x has e equal to zero. Now, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to keep this table here the whole time, I'm hoping. Um, what I'm going to do is start our table. So our table has to have x and y coordinates. Um, it should have the function over here. And the first thing that goes in our table, just like in Calc 1, is the critical points. That's the first part. The second part, which is usually the long part in these, is deal with the boundary. Well, in order to deal with the boundary, I have to know what I'm actually looking at. So we always have to draw the region. Now the region was supposed to be bounded by y equals x squared, which looks like this. Let me draw this twice just so I don't have to do something. Maybe won't. y equals x plus 12, this looks like that. Like that. I'm imagining that those points there are going to be nice to find. Um, let's see here. That's going to be where x squared equals x plus 12. That's x squared minus x minus 12 equals 0. That's going to be x minus 4. And x plus 3 uh, equals 0. So I'm going to get the point up here. 416, I know it's on y equals x squared. I know I'm gonna get over here on um, minus three nine. So my graph isn't that uh, active, but I don't really care. Um, so this is the region. You can see that you can draw a circle around it and you can see that it contains all its boundary points. So we're going to actually be able to solve this. Now I usually like to name the pieces of the boundary um, with letters. I'm gonna call the, the straight line part A I'm going to call the uh, parabola part B, and now we're going to just start dealing with the boundary. So if I look at part A, now let's see here, part A was y equals x plus 12. Um, now by the way, x here starts at minus 3. Yeah, okay, let's not, let's not deal with that yet. Um, the problem is, is I want to plug this into this function. Uh, I want y squared minus 4xy. Um, and I can ask myself, is it easier to plug in for y here or easier to plug in for x? 
Um, I'm going to say, let's see here, it's easier to plug in for x because I only have to put it in one spot. So I'm going to solve for x here. This is x equals y minus 12, like that. And then the function becomes, this is going to be a function of y. That's going to be y squared minus 4 times y minus 12 times y. I'm going to get, let's see here, y squared minus 4y squared plus 48y. I'm going to combine my y's, so I'm going to get minus 3y squared plus 48y like that. So that's a function, but it's a function of just one variable. We just turned this into a Calc 1 problem as long as we can find the interval. Um, well, the interval is going to be y values. The y values go as low as 9 and as high as 16. So the closed interval we get to deal with here is 9 is less than y is less than 16 like that. And what we're going to want to do is just find the critical points and then use the endpoints and put them all in. So over here, I'm just going to take the derivative. Remember, this is not a partial derivative. This is the actual derivative because it's just a function of one variable. I get f prime of y is equal to minus 6y plus 48, like that. Um, that's always defined. I should always say that. Um, so I can just find the critical point here by setting this equal to 0. I'm going to get y equals 8. So we turn this into a Calc 1 problem where the endpoints are 9 and 16 and the y value is 8. So I'm going to put in the 9. We'll worry about the x's in just a second. And the 16 and the 8. Now what do we know? We know that um, the x value at that endpoint was minus 3. The x value at the other endpoint was 4. And we know, where do we look at this, that y equals x plus 12. So x equals y minus 12. x equals y minus 12. I think that makes this this. Minus 4, 8. All right. Um, now I'm going to deal with the other part of the boundary. The other part of the boundary. Um, I've called that part B. Don't know if this is going to be more work than the other one, but we'll, we'll see for part B. Um, we know that y equals x squared. I know I'm trying to plug into the function y squared minus 4xy. Right now, do I want to solve for x or solve for y? I think for this one, I'm going to plug in an x squared wherever I see a y, because um, I don't want to take the square root. That's just going to that's just going to stink. All right. So what I'm going to get is a function. I'm plugging in x squared. No. Yes, for y. So this is going to be a function of just x. This is y squared, which has x to the fourth, minus 4 times x times x squared. And you can see that I put in an x squared for y in here, making that x to the fourth. The minus 4x is still there. And wherever I saw the y, I put another x squared. Let's see here. So what am I going to get? I'm going to get x to the fourth minus 4x cubed. I do need a closed interval. Um, the x values go from minus 3 to 4. Like that. And now we find the critical points just like we do in Calc 1. So this is going to be the derivative here. It's going to be 4x cubed minus 12x squared. This is always defined. So I can find the critical points just by setting it equal to 0. I pull out a 4x squared like this, 4x squared, and what's left I think is x minus 3. Does that sound right? Let's see here. That's 4x cubed minus 12x squared. I set that equal to 0. I get x equals 0. I get x equals 3. And those are points that need to go on my table. Now x equals 0 is already there. x equals 3 is not. Um, and y equals x squared here, so I'm going to get like this. And what we have now is we've found the critical points, we found every point on, on the boundaries which could possibly be um, a maximum, and we've included all these points. Now all this work to this point has just told us that 
Uh, one of these points is guaranteed to be the maximum. One of these points is guaranteed to be the minimum. And all we have to do now is just plug in those numbers and whichever number, whichever function value gives us the, is the highest, that gives us the maximum. Whichever function value gives us the low point, that gives us the minimum. And I'm hoping I can do this. I'm going to rewrite this just as y times y minus 4x. Sometimes it helps with the arithmetic. Um, let's see here. When I plug in y equals 0, I get 0. When I plug in, let's see here. What do I want to do? Well, I think I'm going to do this one. x times y is minus 27. Minus 4 times 27 is 108. 108 plus 81. 108 plus 81, I think is 189. Now, does that sound right? X times Y, I think it is. All right, here we go. Um, the, the next one, let's see, Y minus 4X. I think I'm gonna use this one this time, right? Because Y is 16, X is four, and when I plugged in, I'm gonna get a zero. Happy about that. Now, um, to do the next one, I just wanna bring up one point. This happens a lot. In Calc 1, remember our x values only go as far left as 3 and as far right as 4. That means this one shouldn't be in our list because it's not even in our region. So we don't have to worry about that one too much. I'm happy about that. Um, to get the final one, let's see here, what am I going to do? 3 times 9 is 27. Minus 4 times 27 is minus 108. Minus 108 plus 81, I think, is minus 27. I get something like that. Now, if those numbers are correct, I apologize if they're not, um, but I think where this is gonna illustrate the point anyways, you can see here's the global max, here's the global min, um, you can see that this one, by the way, came from the boundary, but this one did not. Um, so. Um, just a reminder, uh, you have to find all the critical points. You cannot just plug in the endpoints on the boundaries, right? That will that would have not actually found um, the um, the global minimum for us. But that's the basic procedure. Uh, and in just recapping, find the critical points, start making a table. Um, for each of the pieces of the boundary, uh, find an equation of the boundary in one variable with an inequal with inequalities that define that. So it's a closed interval. And then you have a mini calc one problem to do for each piece of the boundary, giving us more endpoints, more critical points, giving us a big table. Once we have the big table, we just plug in uh, the points and find the, the Z values. And whichever Z value is biggest, that's guaranteed to be the global max. Uh, wherever the Z level is smallest, that's guaranteed to be the global min.